As you can see, I'm currently creating a new lithium ion battery pack for an upcoming project. And by attaching a suitable BMS circuit to the pack, we can not only prevent overcurrent events, but also charge the pack easily. The only feature that is missing for me is a battery level indicator, for which we could use this LiPo battery voltage tester, that I got for cheap from eBay. And while it certainly measures the voltage of each cell correctly, I'm not thrilled about the display, since you cannot easily tell how much energy in percentage is left in the batteries. A possible and awesome solution for that would be an LED board display. So in this video, let's talk about the classic LM3914IC, whose job is, coincidentally, to drive LED board displays. And furthermore, let's also create our own more precise LED battery level indicator circuits. Let's get started. This video is sponsored by JLC PCB. One fact about them. JLC PCB focuses on rapid prototypes of 1 to 6 layer PCBs, and all of them are shipped directly from their factories after being produced. Upload your Gerber files to test the fast speed of prototype production and delivery. According to the datasheet of the LM3914, it is an IC that senses analog voltage levels and drives 10 LEDs accordingly which is basically just what we need, since the voltage of a battery can tell us how much energy it got left. So I positioned the IC on a breadboard and had a closer look at its typical application circuits given by the datasheet. The 10 LEDs need to get connected with their cathodes to the pins 1, 10, 11, 12, up to 18. And no, they do not require a current limiting resistor since the IC features constant current outputs. This current can be set by connecting a resistor between the ref out pin and ground. I went with a 2 kilo ohm resistor, which gives us a current of around 6.25 mA per LED. Next, we have to connect V- to ground, V- plus to the supply voltage, ref adjust to ground and mode to the supply voltage to activate the bar graph mode. And if you want to learn why exactly I connected those pins to either ground or the supply voltage, then I would highly recommend checking out the datasheet, since it is very well written. Anyway, what is left to connect are the RLO, SIG and RHI pins, which determine to which voltage and voltage range the LEDs will react. To learn more about it, let's look at the block diagram of the IC. In a nutshell, we got 10 comparators to whose inverting inputs is the SIG aka signal pin connected. The non-inverting inputs of the upper comparator is connected to the RHI pin, while the following ones are all connected to the previous non-inverting input through a 1 kilo ohm resistor. And the last resistor is connected to the RLO pin. Now the signal pin usually connects to the changing analog voltage so the battery voltage, while the RHI and RLO pins are connected to the voltage potential window we want to cover. For example, if we have a look at the discharge curve of the utilized INR18650-25R lithium ion batteries, then we can see that their voltage range starts at 4.1 volts and goes down to around 2.9 volts. Multiply that by 4, since I got a 4S 4P battery pack, and we got a voltage window of 16.4 to 11.6 volts. So we connect a 16.4 volt potential to RHI and an 11.6 volt potential to RLO. Due to the resistor ladder, which acts like a voltage divider, we now got 10 different voltage potentials at the comparator inputs. And since we know that if the inverting input has a higher voltage than the non-inverting inputs, the output will be pulled down to ground, meaning the LED on the output will light up, it all starts to make sense. As the battery voltage decreases, it reaches the 10 different resistor ladder voltage potentials, 
turns the output high and thus turns the LED off. For demonstration purposes, I built up the described circuits with a constant voltage source and a potentiometer as a signal input. And as you can see, when the battery voltage drops, the LEDs turn off one after the other. Awesome you might think, I will use that for my new battery pack. Well, if you want a crude battery level indicator, then go for it. But for me, there's still a problem. Since we got 10 LEDs, you would think that each one represents 10% of energy in the battery pack. But that is not true. Due to the resistor ladder of the IC with only 1 kilo ohm resistors, we get a linear voltage decrease. But if we would mark those points in the discharge curve of the battery, then we can see that it does not follow the actual line very well. One solution for that is to decrease the voltage window so that we look at the mostly linear section of the discharge curve. And while we're at it, we should also set the last LED to 12% energy, which the capacity of 2.2 amp hours represents. But for me, even those changes are not enough. So I came up with my own LED battery level indicator schematic. It basically works the same way as the LM3914 with its comparators but I only use 6 LEDs, no constant current methods, source current instead of syncing it, and can set the trigger voltage potential of each comparator stage manually through a trimmer. And after I did a small proof of concept test on a breadboard, I went ahead and soldered all the required components to a piece of perfboard and connected them to one another according to the schematic. To create the constant 20 volts for the power and the trigger voltages, I also utilized a small boost converter module, which I directly soldered to the perf board. And after fine tuning that, it was time to adjust the trigger voltages. For that, I set my lowest capacity limit to 2.2 amp hours and the highest one to, obviously, 0 amp hours. Then I calculated 4 linear capacity steps between those two values and marked them in the discharge curve. According to the point of intersection, I took the reading for the different voltage levels and simply multiplied them by 4 to get the right trigger voltage for the 6 different battery states. Afterwards, I simply tuned the trimmers to output the required voltage to the comparator's inverting inputs. And just like that, this project was complete. And as you can see by doing a test with my lab bench power supply, it seems like everything works like anticipated. Of course, if you use a different battery type, you should also have a look at their discharge curve to set the correct voltage values in order to get a pretty accurate battery level indicator. And with that being said, I hope you enjoyed this video and learned something new along the way. If so, don't forget to like, share and subscribe. Stay creative and I will see you next time.